Welcome to the Gravity Engine tutorial on creating models of the solar system. We'll start by showing you where we're headed, which is a model of the inner solar system, which when we hit play, shows us Venus, Earth, Mars, and if we zoom out a little bit, we have Ceres, zooming out a little bit further, we have the comet 67P, which is the comet recently visited by the Rosetta probe. The purpose of this tutorial is to show you how this scene was created. So let's stop. We'll create new empty scene. And we'll begin, as we usually do, by adding a gravity engine to the system. 3D object gravity engine. And as we begin here, we'll set the scale to solar units. So notice that our units are now in astronomical units, 10 to the 24 kilograms in years. And for the inner solar system, we'll pick a scale of 100 unity units per AU. So the Earth will be at a radius of 100. And we'll make our game speed, let's say, 30 seconds per year. And that'll suffice. Enter in that field. Then the next thing we do is we go into the prefabs solar system directory and just grab this solar system prefab. And as it stands, all that the solar system has is a sun model. It's created a sun with the appropriate mass in 10 to the 24 kilogram units. And we have this solar system script here we can specify the date at which we want uh, all of the positions to be initialized with. And then we have prefabs for planets, asteroids, and comets. And these prefabs are seen down here. They consist of a planet model, a trail renderer, an orbit renderer to show you the orbit in the scene, and a text label which can be optionally used if you want to label the elements in your scene. The most important part of this attribute is the add body button, which if we click, brings up a dialog box which allows us to choose what kind of body we want to add, planet, asteroid, comet, and then asteroids and comets from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory database, which we'll get to in a minute. So to begin with, we'll simply pick Venus as our first planet, and we'll say create, and we can see it's added a planet in the scene, and we've got Venus over here with the appropriate mass for the system. If we look at the solar system model again, there was one other field called planet size per 10,000 kilometers, which allows us to apply a uniform scale to all of the planets given their radiuses. Generally, the planet size scale needs to be different than the distance between the planet scale, simply for the objects to be visible at all. So in this case, we're going to set our planet scale to 5. Now, going back to the solar system object, we'll just click Add Body. We'll pick the Earth, Create, Add Body. We'll pick Mars. Create. And then the other thing before we take a quick peek at what we have here that I like to do is take this mission camera prefab, which is just a camera with some controls using the arrow keys and greater than, less than to change the camera angle. We'll get rid of the previous main camera. And then in this case, since we're working in AU and we have the Earth orbit at about 100, we'll set the boom length of this mission camera so the camera is about 250 units away from the origin. So now if we press play, we can see we have our three planets. We have Venus, Earth, and Mars in their appropriate orbits. We can use the arrow down key, change the scene a little bit. And that's the inner solar system. It's fairly quick and simple. Now let's add some other objects that are not planets. So we'll pick add body. We'll take asteroid, and there is now a selection of a variety of asteroids here, which just happen to be the first, I think, 40 it is from the 
commonly looked at asteroids, which we can create. So we've added the asteroid series to this seat. It might be that the asteroid or comet that you're looking for is not in the list that's provided by Gravity Engine, in which case you can go to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory database for such objects. So if we click, for example, JPL Comet, we have this button called Open Comet Database. So we'll click that, and that will take us to a browser, which takes us to what is essentially a flat ASCII file. And each of these lines is a comet that has been logged and tracked. And there are, I think, about 250,000 entries in this file. So let's just do a search here for C-H-U-R-Y, and here we pick up 67P, and I won't try and pronounce the Russian name. And if we copy that line and then return to Unity, in this JPL data box here, we can simply paste it, and the field is automatically decoded, and it tells us that this is a comet that has the orbital axis of 3.46 AU, tells us about the inclination, eccentricity, uh, and the appropriate parameters, and we can then click Create, and we've added P67 to our system. And now we can look at the scene here. We have these objects, we can zoom out. We can see that the comet, in fact, goes well beyond the orbit of Mars, and in fact, outside of the orbit of Ceres. We could add Jupiter to the scene if we wanted, its orbit would be uh, out about here somewhere. If you're adding a number of asteroids and comets and can be a little bit challenging, challenging to keep track of which one is which. So there is a facility to automatically label these objects if you wish to use it. You don't have to, but you can. So under game object, we're gonna use the Unity rendering system. We will add a canvas and we will take this canvas and switch it to world space. And then you'll notice that, for example, on the Venus object that was created, there's a text label in the prefab that was filled in with the correct text. Similarly, for 67P, that's also correctly labeled. So if we now just take this solar system object and place it on the canvas, then when we press play, we can see that the labels for all the objects are present. We can see series. We can see our friend 67P. And we have the inner solar system with an asteroid and a comet. Thanks for watching.